How's it going everybody and welcome back to this Mantine course. And in today's video we're going to be learning about how to use the app shell component in Mantine. So don't worry your project does not look anything like this. This is what we're going to be building by the end of the project. So we'll have learned how to work with the nav bar right here on the side, the header as well as the app shell. So inside of the app shell we have a simple table the, inside of the header we put our dark and light theme button if you want to know how to implement that the link to that video is in the description below and the nav bar right here without further ado let's get into it first things first before we even jump into anything we have to learn about the actual app shell and how it works so according to the documentation that I pulled up here the link to this is in the description below app shell is a layout component that can be used to create a common header nav bar content layout pattern app shell header and nav bar components include bare minimum default styles to simplify customization. Basically that just means there's three parts to app shell. You have the actual app right here. You have the header, which most people actually call a nav bar. And you have the actual nav bar on the side right here. And if we scroll a little bit down, we'll see how this is actually implemented into code. We have a main app shell component and inside of there we have the props, nav bar, header, and the styles applied to it. My only gripe with the documentation for app shell is the fact that for the navbar content and the header content, they don't actually put anything here to actually make this example. But if we scroll a little bit lower, we'll see this responsive styles. Now this is what's used to actually collapse the navbar at a certain viewpoint. So if I were to go into my spec tool and I were to resize this, we'll see that it gets smaller and smaller until a certain viewpoint where it just collapses and we see this hamburger icon which I click and it'll open up the nav bar. So this is what we're actually going to be implementing into our app today. Alright so last time we left off our app looked something like this where we implemented our buttons and I'm going to go into my code editor and the first thing that we're going to be doing is we have to create a new component and I'll call the component app shell.tsx and I'm going to go back into the Mantine documentation and I am going to just copy the responsive styles example right here. And I'll paste that into that file. And we're going to change this name to be app shell example. And we also have to export it as well. So to export default, just like that. And now if you were to put it into our application, it'll basically cover up the entire app. So I'll do app shell example like so. If you go back into our app, we'll see that we have it imported. Now let's go ahead and actually make it look responsive and actually add our content inside of it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all my cards, the buttons, and the paper right here since we don't need any of that stuff. In fact, I'm going to take this light and dark mode button and I'm going to put it inside of our header so it'll be right next to our application navbar like so. We also have to import it. Oh, whoops, it's actually in the navbar. Let's put it in the header, which is right down here. So right below there. There we go. So now if we look at it, it should be perfect. Awesome, so now it's right here. So if I were to toggle dark mode and light mode, it should toggle perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and make this actually toggle dark mode and light mode. So to do that, what I'm going to do is go into my app.tsx and I'll cover my app shell example in a paper tag. And so now if we go back into our app, we should see, perfect, so now we have the app shell, the navbar and the header, dark mode, light mode compatible. Now let's go ahead and actually add some content inside of the items. So the content that we're going to be filling our app shell with is going to be a simple table. So inside of the search field in the Mantine documentation, I'll search up table. And we'll see this example, the very first example right here of a table. This is exactly what we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll import that into our project. So I'm going to create a new component. I'll call it table example.tsx. And I'll import it. Let's get rid of this name and we'll call it table example and we will export it as well. So export default table example and we also need to actually get our data. So there's an example for that right above it, 
right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And right above everything, whoops, inside of there, I'm going to go ahead and paste it. And I'll just copy this a couple of times. And I'll just paste that there, just so we have enough data so we can actually scroll. And so now what we have to do is we have to import it into our app shell. And it's really simple. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this text right here, which is inside of the app shell. And we're going to import our table example. And now if we go back and we go into our app, we should see a proper table where we can scroll. And now if we try to inspect it and we try to make it responsive and we minimize it, we'll see that it is responsive and the app bar and nav bar do actually collapse like so. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the actual nav bar itself. And let's add a few sections into the nav bar so we can see how that would work. So to add the sections, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this text right here and I'll do navbar dot section. And the first section, we'll just put a simple text right here and that'll just be hello, this is title. And the next section, same thing, navbar dot section. But for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a grow and empty is equal to large which will allow it to actually grow. And so for this, I'm going to give it the same thing, text. And I'll say example one, and I'll copy this example, and I'll paste it four times, and I'll just rename these right here. So two, three, and four. And so now we have two sections. And now if we want to add the final section, all we need to do is we just need to copy this. And now this is our footer. Whoops, not fodder, footer, there we go. And if I go back into the app and I open this up, we'll see that we have a title, our section for the uh, links, and our footer. All right, so now I'm just going to quickly talk about each of these properties that we've added into our app shell. So the first one is the navbar offset breakpoint, which according to the documentation controls when the navbar should no longer be offset with padding left, which isn't that big of a deal. And the next one after that is fixed prop on app shell will automatically be added to the header and nav bar. So what this means is if we didn't have fixed, instead of the app bar actually collapsing on itself, it'll just continuously stay there for as long as it possibly can. And from a user perspective, that's not very good. So we're gonna keep that fixed right there. Our right, next thing is the padding in the nav bar. And this is just gonna be the simple padding of the actual nav bar. So if we go into our inspect tool and we inspect this right here, We'll see this green box right here. That's the medium padding. If we did extra large, it'll be have it'll have more padding. Next thing is the breakpoint at which the nav bar will be hidden if the hidden prop is true. So right now it's at small. So at the small viewport viewpoint, it'll be hidden like that right there. But if I were to do let's say large, it'll be then hidden at large right over here. As you can see, it's not there anymore. So we're going to keep it as small, and we're going to keep this as small as well. Next thing is hidden is equal to not open. So hides the navbar when the viewport size is less than the value specified in the hidden breakpoint. So what this open basically means is that whenever the hamburger icon will appear in the app bar, it will collapse and uncollapse. Initially, if we do not opened, it'll not open. But if we do it as opened, when it hits that little viewpoint right there, it'll show it immediately. So from a user's perspective, we want to make sure it's disabled, like so. After that, we have the width. So at the small viewpoint, sorry, viewport, it'll have 300 width, and the large viewport will have 400 width. So if we did, let's say, 500 width at the small, we should see right here, we see it's substantially bigger well, not substantially, it's a little bit bigger than the large viewport. So before I talk about the header, we're actually gonna make a small change to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these align item center and the width 100%. And I'm gonna replace it with a justify content to be a space between. So we actually have the item space between like that right there. So now let's talk about the actual header. All right, so you might be seeing right here, the very first thing, the media query, it says you're larger than small and then styles none. You can think of this sort of like an if statement where you're saying if 
the media query is larger than small, then make sure that the burger right here, whatever is inside of the media query, in this case, it's the burger icon, has a display none. If it is less than small, then it will show the hamburger icon like so right there. Awesome, so that concludes this tutorial. Just remember that whatever you import within the app shell tags right here is what's gonna be inside of the actual app shell itself. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.